Well, we're spiking a little bit of a skew against Luzun in the round of 16. We are still going in the conference league and we have a very nice path through the final. If we can make it that far today, we have the quarterfinals and we take on RZ. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to episode 82 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today. We play both legs of the Conference League quarterfinals. As I said in the intro, we take on RZ from the Netherlands. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do consider going down below, hitting that thumbs up button. And also, if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated and those thumbs up do help push the video out to more people. But off the back of yesterday's episode, which was a game in the Bundesliga against Bayern Munich before that second leg against Luzern. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Since then, we have played three games in the Bundesliga. One big one in particular, which unfortunately... We did suffer a defeat him, but before then, we picked up two quite good wins, which does mean we are still in the hunt for European football through our Bundesliga finishing position. First up, we did take on bottom of the table, Sandhausen picked up a very comfortable 3-0 win in this game. Three first half goals, one to Blomé, one to Xerxes, and an own goal, which to be fair, I think, should have ended up going to Anhalo from memory. Off the back of that, Justin Blomé did get a straight red card, so we did play with only 10 men for a half in this game, but thankfully Sandhausen, not a very good team, and we did pick up a 3-0 win, as you would expect, and then off the back of that, a very good result away at Hoffenheim, those guys currently are in a European qualifying spot for next season, yet again, a 3-0 win, grabbed a goal just before halftime through Albin Krasner, he also added one early in the second half, and late on, Nicolo Amadori, he picked up one as well, so that was a very good win, considering where Hoffenheim are on the Bundesliga table, the one disappointment from this game and it does affect us in the conference league. Benjamin Bushuari picked up an injury. He is gone for the rest of the season with a broken lower leg. So it does mean that now we are quite light in terms of left wingers in our conference league squad. Unfortunately too late to register any new players for that competition. So can't register our youngster in Tunde Musa. So we're quite light. It does mean that Anhalo will have to play quite a bit of football for us in the conference league for however much longer it is that we are alive. In that competition, so that was a blow, but still a very good win before we took on Eintracht Frankfurt and quite a big game with those guys at that stage being just behind us on the Bundesliga table. And unfortunately, we couldn't quite back up those good performances from our prior two games. It was nil all for most of it, but for around about 25 minutes left, as per usual, it was Kolomani who puts the ball past our goalkeeper in a visit. That was a lone goal, and we suffer a 1-0 defeat, which kind of, under our good work, from those previous two games, we are back down in eighth on the Bundesliga table, but only one point behind Eintracht Frankfurt, and still not that far behind RB Leipzig, albeit behind us too. Schalke Mainz and Fortuna Düsseldorf are also still right in that hunt with only five games left in the Bundesliga season coming up in today's episode. In between the quarterfinal that we do play against RZ, we are going to be taking on in that competition, Hertha Berlin, those guys are down the table a little bit. So you'd hope that is a game at home that we can pick up a win in, albeit there is a slight concern going into these ties against RZ. And that is because we've picked up more injuries than just that Bushuari one over the last little while. Daniel Cueto pulled abdominal muscle. He is out for six days to two more weeks. So he'll be missing all these games. In today's episode, alongside that, Tom Gall is still out. So it does mean in terms of center back, you're going to have to call up someone from our under-19s. That's the same case in behind Jordan Xerxes in the cam role. And as well as that, Paolo Cesar has a twisted ankle. Might be fit in time for the second league at home against RZ, but it will be very touch and go and certainly won't be involved in that first league or that game against Hertha Berlin. So a couple of injury concerns going in to today's episode, but hopefully we can pick up a good result here in the quarterfinals of the Conference League, especially with the draw that we did get for that round and also the semi-finals. There you can see what has happened. Leal take on Athletic Bilbao. That is definitely the headline tie in the quarters. But going forward and having a look at the draw for the semis, we got a very nice one. We were on the perfect side of the draw as I was hoping for, if we get past RZ, we take on the winner of the tie between Nifty Baku and Grasshopper Zurich. So really, 
it's a climb path to the final for a German team. So hopefully we can at least make it that far and maybe pick up a European trophy at the first time of asking, making the most of no English teams being in this competition in this current season. But first up, we do need to get past RZ. They are out of the Netherlands. These guys currently in fourth on the Eredivisie. That was where they were predicted to finish in behind Ajax, Feyenoord and PSV Eindhoven. These guys, three and a half star reputation club. So the same as Lou Zoom, but I do feel like these guys probably a little bit stronger coming from what I believe is a stronger league. They're probably quite similar in terms of a team that we've played so far in this competition to a Trabzon Spore, maybe just a little bit better, but certainly below the likes of Lille Roma and Athletic Bilbao. So I'm hopeful we can pick up a result in this time, make our way through to the semis, where I actually feel like the draw might be a bit weaker in that round than it is in the quarterfinal, as I said before, a couple of injury concerns, but hopefully nothing we can't deal with. And we hopefully can pick up a win in this first league and just ease the pressure going into that second one, unlike what happened against Luzerne come the end of last week. A couple of changes to our team going into this one, obviously, with those injuries that we do have to deal with. Ryan is staying at left back, of course, with no Paolo Cesar. We've also got Xerxes in the camera with no Daniel Cueto. And Matty White gets a start. He just seems to be a bit better of a striker in the Conference League compared to Nicolo Amadori. Also caught up a couple of the youngsters from our under-19s for this game with those injuries that we are dealing with. A couple of players in particular from our most recent youth intake, including Rosler. We only signed him off the back of yesterday's episode. So we'll just give some of these youngsters here some numbers, get rid of these players who are no longer featuring for the first team out of that number list. And we'll make our way through to this first leg of this Conference League quarterfinal. I think we're the slight favourites going into this one, but away from home, this could be a situation like what did happen in yesterday's episode, but hopefully if we do take a 2-0 lead this time, we will be able to hold on to it and then go home and finish off the job a little bit more comfortably. As I said, Matty White has been doing a really good job for us in this competition, so hopefully that does continue. But Daniel Cueto has been quite a good goal scorer for us this season, so hopefully missing him doesn't impact us too much, albeit Jordan Zerxi not doing too bad a job. Either they are playing there a 4-1, 4-1 that Coop Miners is not the Coop Miners who you might be thinking of. It's a younger one. And there we are with that 4 2 3 1 that we are going with. And hopefully we can pick up a decent result here away from home and make things, as I said, just a little bit less stressful than it was in and around that Luzon tie. In the round of 16, and we'll get things underway here off the back of that intro with the Conference League music, which, as you know, I need to talk over so I don't get a copyright claim like we got come one of the episodes during last week, but a pretty quiet start in this game, but nine minutes in, there is a free kick here to RZ, the home team here in the red and the white. They were on the attack there, just ran backwards briefly, but now Sugawara puts one there into the mix. So thankfully, Camillo with a good foot in, and we try and get something going here down this left-hand side through Unhello and through Ryan. Definitely don't want injuries to those two players, but if we pass there, but thankfully, just shuffle it on in time and do keep possession there, eventually getting the ball to Hurtado, Escobar with a back pass again, that one did threaten to be a little bit weak, but thankfully we are just keeping hold of the ball, but that's a good tackle there from Sugawara on Ryan, I believe it was, and it is now RZ back in position, but this time Escobar with a good foot in, plays that to Blomaye and Mastis starts to cut inside, nice through ball there for Unhello, tight angle, it's a tackle, it's been awarded though as a penalty, and no VAR, which is surprising. That didn't look that clear cut. I thought we might be waiting there for the little man and his screen, but it has been given. And Escobar goes straight down the middle and puts that one away. Only his third goal of the season. It's a bit of a gift, and it's a bit of a debatable gift as well. But we go one nil up just past the 10-minute mark from the penalty spot. And hopefully from here, we can kick on and pick up a win in the first league. As I said, take some pressure off going into that home league and maybe also get the chance to rest a couple of players, albeit there is a highlight shortly off the back of that opening goal, and it is RZ who are in position. Good short passing, Bignato just makes his way inside the box. Ibizic, it was pretty much straight at him, but he still puts it out for a corner. Some dodgy goalkeeping there, but thankfully it did not result in a goal. He praised our players, and it does stop that highlight from continuing, albeit a few minutes later, it was again the RZ who were on the attack, but we clear it well, and Anhalo is on the ball, Escobar finds Mastis there, and a bit of space, Maddie White finds Vodgen, Yut Agen, and lots of space, plays the ball over the top this time, for Juden Xerxes, who finds Maddie White somehow, 
puts it away, it will count as a goal. I'm pretty sure Xerxes there took on a shot, it was blocked, it fell very kindly to Matty White, and just like that, we go 2-0 up inside 20 minutes, and maybe that scare against Luzerne is going to do us the world of good. It was actually a good pass that from Xerxes to White, tucks away bottom right corner, he picks up another goal in the Conference League, and this has been a brilliant first half for us in this game. In terms of overall shots, not doing better than RZ, although as I say that, we are, but shots on target, the big difference maker in this game, and we now have a 2-0 lead with 20 minutes left in the first half. Hopefully, we can kick on a little bit and put these guys away in the first leg, and maybe could show you guys that Hofer Berlin game if that was the case, but there is a highlight here with 10 minutes left in the first half. Yet again, we are in position. Hopefully, can put the foot down a little bit more than we did in that first league against Luzerne. Quite fortunately, that Unhello does keep that ball. Does get in behind, but there he forces a very good save out of a Wusu Adelo in goal for RZ. We have a corner which hopefully we can do something from, but certainly on the front foot in this game, we go far post there for Camillo. Can't quite link up, albeit Xerxes has the ball here inside the box. If he clearance there from RZ, from that danger through the air, but there's a good save there from Awusu Adelo yet again. We will have another corner off the back of that. Unhello goes to the center of the box that time. Can't find anyone. Xerxes might try and get another shot off that time. It gets blocked. A couple of good chances for us there in a row. Still up by two goals to nil though, with only a few minutes left in this first half. And it does look like that's what the scoreline might be. Going into half time, Mikhail Mastis has picked up an orange injury. We might need to check on that at half time, but pretty happy with how the boys are going out there, grabbing that turner lead through those goals to Manny White. And also there was that one as well to Sebastian Escobar from the penalty spot. As I said, a little bit fortunate. Danny Hermel is going to have to come on for Mastis. That is an area, as I've said before, we're quite weak in terms of this Conference League squad, seeing as we need to register a couple of homegrown club players. In fact, just the one. And that was Danny Hermel. We'll tell the guys they're doing well, but hopefully can improve a little bit and put these guys away in the second half. Of course, in that first league against Luzerne, we did fade away late. They grabbed two goals inside those last 10 minutes. And now it's here a free kick for us first up in the second half. Escobar will look for a second goal. Not a bad effort there either. It actually forces a very good save out of Awusu Adelu in goal, who is being forced into a couple of good saves off the back of them going 2-0 down the corner. We look far post here this time for Blomé, but Voss will head that one away. Nothing doing off the back of that. We keep our 2-0 lead, but really looking here to make it 3-0 and hopefully put this tie to bed before we do head in to that second leg. Another highlight here, Xerxes is on the ball. He finds Blomé on the edge of the box, looking for Anhalo. They head that one away do RZ and might get a chance here on the counter-attack. Vignato makes his way forward, but good work that time from Billy Camillo. Finds Ryan just inside him. That left-hand side is an area we don't want any injuries in these games in today's episode because we are quite weak with our drop-off off the back of not having Bushuari or Paolo Cesar, but we keep the ball here off the back of getting it back. It is now Hitado who looks for a long ball forward. He picks out Danny Hermel. What can he do? Fresh legs. Off of the bench, he just turns backwards there, finds Blomaye, tries to square that one nicely for Escobar, another good chance for him, just goes wide, still only up by two goals to nil, but certainly looking threatening to try and grab that third that we are after, as I said, to hopefully put this tight bed so far, RZ not getting that many shots on target, which is fortunate, just checking here on player fitness, no one yet is down to a red hand, to be fair, most players out there are quite good in terms of of their ratings as well, so we'll just wait here, give them a praise, and see if we need to change that in a couple of minutes' time. The highlight starts here as we're about to head our way into the last 20 of this game, around about the time where Luzerne did turn the tide in that first leg at the end of last week. In the round of 16, a nice long ball board there, and Danny Hummel gets on the end of that, squares that one for Xerxes, finds Matty White, who tucks that one away for his 18th goal of the season, but it's been ruled out for offside. That did look like a very close call. That was the goal that we were after. And that is a very, very debatable offside call. Yet again, no VAR. That would have been a brilliant goal. 3-0 would have been a much more comfortable scoreline going in to that second leg. And it will be especially the case if RZ do grab a goal back. That will be an interesting decision that could come back to haunt us. But it is RZ there. The goalkeeper pumps that deep. Thankfully, Kimio does somewhat deal with it, albeit, unfortunately, Unhello 
can't quite win the battle for that ball down that far side and RZ are on the attack. They try and square that one inside the box, thankfully dealt with. And now we get a chance to do something on the counter attack. Matty White can't quite win that one in the air. Now Xerxy gets the ball robbed of him, but thankfully Camillo back on the ball. Hitado plays that one out to Vochin down the right. Now Danny Hermel will find Blomaye. Escobar up to White. And hello. Lots of space there on that far side, but unfortunately, look to go forward. And now RZ here with a lot of numbers. Navarro does get in behind, and it is Federico Navarro who will get a goal back for RZ off the back of a debatable one being ruled out against Matty White. And instead of it being 3 0, it is now 2 1. Hopefully, not going to happen the same way it did against Luzerne in that first league. But unfortunately, on the counter attack, the RZ just got a lot of numbers. And we couldn't deal with it with only one man trying to mark about three. Off the back of that, we're going to make a couple of substitutions, albeit just seeing here that we do, of course, have quite a significant drop off in some areas. But still, I think fresh legs might be a good idea. So young Rosler can come on in place of Blomay. Also, we'll bring on Sempic in place of Xerxy and Kruger in place of Unhello on that left wing. Also, tell our guys to be more disciplined, so giving a few youngsters some game time at this stage, but hopefully getting some fresh bodies on, even though they might not be of that good a quality, can make sure that we do hold on here to our one goal cushion. Good work that time from Matty White, plays that back to Ryan, albeit he gets that ball robbed of him from Volpato. And now Sebastian Escobar, just inside the box, brings down that attacker, and they get a penalty back to be fair. We got an iffy one early on in this game, and we might be doing something similar to what we did against Luzerne, we are because Gustin Avia puts that one away. It's two all, and there's still a fair bit of time left in this first league of RZ. Do continue this momentum to potentially grab a league going into that second league, but that time it's poor from Escobar. Kind of undoes his work where he got that penalty early on, and now it is two all off the back of that. We'll tell our guys to be more disciplined, but that is disappointing, hopefully. We can just make sure that we can at least take this one back home. Locked up at two all like was the case in that Luzerne tie. We'll just get Zempic there to ease off tackles. We'll also go attacking lane in this game just to see if that will do anything. But unfortunately, we've blown it late yet again. Great start. That first half in particular was very good. And also Matty White, bit harsh. I felt like that goal getting ruled out, which would have made it 3-0, but off the back of that, they did score one on the counter-attack through Navarro, and then Avia from the penalty spot to cancel out that one that was scored by Escobar nice and early. We'll tell the guys, not very happy with how they've thrown away that win yet again, but I suppose still might have the slight advantage going in to that second leg back at home, but that is not ideal yet again. We blow things late. On my birthday in game two, which is not ideal, the boys will be getting no cake later on after we find our way to a local restaurant in the Netherlands, to be fair. Not sure if you want the kind of cake they serve over in the Netherlands when you are a sporting team, but unfortunately, still a bit to play for on that second league. We'll come back shortly and get stuck into it. Still locked up at 2 all against RZ. And just before the second league against RZ, of course, we did take on Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga in between these two legs of the quarterfinal. And thankfully, despite a scoreless first half, Nicolo Amadori stepped up in the second half of this game. Nice through ball there to slot him through. And yet again, that one over the top, he grabs two goals early and late in that second half to put us 2-0 up. And then actually completes a hat trick in injury time. So Nicolo Amadori proving a big difference maker for us. In this game, that third one with his head, as we have become so accustomed to from the big Italian, and that's three big points in the Bundesliga. As you can see at home, slightly more dominant in that game, certainly more shots and a lot more on target. Thankfully, did make the most of it. Nicolo Amadori doing a brilliant job for us in the Bundesliga this season, even if it is Matty White, who is performing a little bit better in terms of the Conference League for us. But what that does for the Bundesliga table, still an eighth one point behind Eintracht Frankfurt. And now only two points behind RB Leipzig does look like at the moment with four games left in that Bundesliga season. It is a free horse race for those last two European qualifying spots, albeit still Mainz, Fortuna, Dusseldorf and Schalke not that far behind us either. But we go into the second game of today's episode still locked up at two all. And unfortunately, with one more injury off the back of that Hertha Berlin game, Michael Mastis, he's got himself a pulled by and it does mean He's just a little bit iffy 
for the second leg. So it does mean that Danny Hermel will come in on the right wing as a starter. But hopefully back at home, we can finish off the job like we did against Luzon. Hopefully a bit more comfortably. As I said during that first leg, where I did feel like for a while, we had that one pretty well under control. In terms of our team going into this game, we have got Alte instead of Hitado as the right-sided centre back. And as well as that, of course, Hummel comes in for the injured Mastis. But apart from that, the same starting lineup is in that first leg. And hopefully this time we can get the job done. Danny Hummel, you can see, a little bit apprehensive going into the second leg. Hopefully that won't be an issue. We can do the job at home like we did against Luzerne yesterday. That was by a scoreline of two goals to one and just sneak our way through yet again, this time to the semi-finals of the Conference League. And as I said, that could actually be a little bit easier than this quarterfinal with that draw that we have got. It does look a very clean path through to the final. And of course, coming up tomorrow's episode as well, we will probably take on Cologne in a DFB Pockle semi as well. So it could be a couple of semi-finals coming up in tomorrow's episode if all goes well and we've been given some quite kind draws in these cup and European competitions this season where you can see it is not the Coop Miners, not the big one. As I did say earlier, but we're underway in this home league and hopefully can make our way through to the semi-finals of this competition. Bot Jim picks up a very early yellow card, which is not ideal. We'll just get him to ease off tackles, but at the moment we are on the front foot without getting a highlight. But as I say that, free kick here in our favor. Camillo gets his head on the end of that one, but Awusu Adulu is in the way. That one was pretty much straight at him, but this highlight will continue. They pump that one deep. Thankfully, it's flicked on into the path of Belio Alte, and we now get a chance here to build out from the back. Unhill on the ball, plays a nice one over there for Maddie White, who just does enough to take that one around the goalkeeper. The defender got a decent touch on that, but Maddie White, as I said before, for some reason, he's doing a way better job than Amadouli in these European competitions. Might just be a case of rotating our team enough so one player's firing in each of the competitions. But good work there from the American off a nice ball over the top from Anhalo. And it's been a very similar case so far to that Luzon tie. We take an early 1-0 lead in the home leg. Hopefully, can get a cushion goal like we did in yesterday's episode, albeit now we are down the other end here for a throw-in to RZ. We somewhat deal with that danger, but it goes back out there to Coop Miners. Navarro has scored a goal in that first league. Voss out to Xavi in a bit of space just on the edge of the box. Plays one over the top there for Vignato. Thankfully, Ryan does deal with that danger. It goes back in, though, to Vignato. Good effort, but thankfully, that powerful shot is just off target. Still 1-0 up about halfway through the first half. But a little bit of a warning shot there from RZ. Hopefully, I don't get too many more of those in this home league. But apart from that, we have well and truly been on the front foot. Actually, quite efficient in front of goal so far, even though we've only scored once. All of our shots have been on target. And there's another one. Lovely bit of work there from that set piece. It was a foreign. Sometimes those can go a little bit funny in Football Manager on one side for some reason. Not too sure why. It can get quite frustrating. But Ryan in there to Anhalo and Xerxy from a tight angle just sneaks that one inside that far post. And it's going exactly like it did against Luzerne in the round of 16. We grab a 2 0 in the home league to make it 4 2. Hopefully, can go into halftime with that scoreline and potentially make some changes, especially now as Blomay has also picked up a yellow card. But that is a pretty good first half, pretty much like it was in the first league. Hopefully, at home, we don't concede twice in the second half and can make our way through. To the semis, we're going to take off those players who are on yellow cards. Luke Campanelli can come on it right back and Racine Bullock in place of Blume. We'll also make sure that Campanelli is easing off tackles. But a pretty good first half. Again, we're going to tell the guys they're doing well, but I think they've got an extra gear to hopefully take care of this match. Hopefully pick up one more goal or at least not concede like we sometimes do lay. I do think that might be a slight concern with this Gagan press style that we do have. It's a corner here for RZ early. In the second half, we actually deal with that danger, but Vignato there, not offside, but he might be. He's in a little bit of space here, puts that one far post for Silvano Voss. He hits that one home, and he is onside. I thought for a minute that one might get ruled out because the goal line there was a little bit off center. Sometimes it's a bit of a telltale sign that the goal will be disallowed, but Voss there, he out jumps Campanelli. Not a good start from our right back, and yet again, we are threatening to bottle this late in this game. And off the back of that, it's another set piece here for RZ. And that time, they just put that one over the bar. Good challenge there from Camillo. Just provides a little bit of a contest, which makes sure that one does go over the bar. But RZ early in the second half 
are looking a bit threatening from its set piece. Just checking in here on player fitness and everyone doing a decent job. So I think we don't need to make any more substitutions at this time, but we might just make sure that we're going to be a bit more disciplined and hopefully that will stop some chances that RZ have got early in the second half, but it's been a pretty similar game to that first leg, but hopefully this time we don't concede any more goals and maybe even go on to score a third going forward 10 minutes, and now there's quite a few players who are down to Red Heart, so it's time for us to make some substitutions. Escobar is one of those players who is down to Red Heart, not going quite as well today. Nico Benedetti, of course, a decent deep line playmaker on the bench, and we might just chuck him on defend to hopefully stem the flow that has been going on in this second half, we also try and make sure here that we do bring off the bench our better player. So because of that, we might move Matt White to left wing and bring on Amadori up front and take off Anhalo, of course. One more injury to a left winger, not what we need with Bushuari out for the rest of the season. Also, we might take off Ryan here and put Campanelli to left back and Alte out to right back. So a little bit of a shuffle up there to our team up front and also in defence, but hopefully that does mean we've got our best players out there who are available, and we can hold on to this one goal advantage as we start to make our way in towards the last 10 minutes. Thankfully, not too much has happened off the back of that hot start from RZ. In the second half, we're making our way deep into this game now, so we'll get those guys who were on attack on to support, and also start to time waste just a little bit, get the goalkeeper to slow down the distribution, and also just slow down that tempo a little bit as well, and hopefully it will mean we hold on here and make our way through with a 4-3 win on aggregate. Yet again, the exact same scoreline that we did pick up against Luzerne, but it's fair to say we have not been as good in the second half as we were in the first. That's becoming a little bit of a concern, and late in this game, Falu Alte has picked up an injury. Yeah. So now we need to chuck someone at right back. Not too sure who. We're just going to have to play around here with our tactic land in this game. We might chuck Hermel there, put Xerxes out to the wing, and also pull those guys right back and play quite defensively in the last couple of minutes of this game. We'll just sort out here the player roles, chuck those wing backs on defend, and the ones in front, they can be on support. And hopefully that doesn't cost us late in this game. In fact, we might even chuck those ones further forward on inverted wing back just to make a bit of difference between those two positions. So they're not exactly the same, but thankfully didn't make too much impact. We hold on for a 2-1 win yet again, a lot closer than it probably should have been. But RZ came at us pretty strong in that second half. That goal back from Boss through a header made it a little bit nervy. But thankfully, not a lot happened inside that last half hour. We just do enough to get the job done. Thankfully, that little bit of a bottle job away from home yet again late on doesn't prove too costly, and we are through to the semi-finals of the Conference League, where hopefully we can find out shortly who we are taking on. It will be Grasshopper Zurich off the back of a 3-1 win in the second leg, so that does look like a quite nice draw for us, as I said. Hopefully we can make our way through to a European final against one of Roma, who got through on penalties, or Athletic Bilbao, who of course we did beat in the league phase, but we're just enough to make our way through to the semis, beating RZ for free on aggregate. So yet again, we've just done enough to get through to the next round of the Conference League. It was a very similar tie to that one against Luzerne over the last couple of episodes, but thankfully just do enough at home to make it through for free on aggregate. Orte, of course, did get injured late in that game, had to be taken off, and he potentially could be out for the rest of the season. Twisted ankle out for four to five weeks. He is registered for the Conference League, and Tom Gale is still injured, but hopefully he'll be back in time for that semi-final against Grasshopper Zurich, but it does mean yet again we will be a little bit weaker in that centre-back area, so the injuries are starting to pile up, but thankfully we make our way through to that next round, and we'll be taking on Grasshopper Zurich, of course. Those guys are from Switzerland, just like Luzerne, who we did take on in yesterday's episode, but these guys Slightly lower reputation and a lot further down on the table in the Swiss League. They're actually all the way down in the second half of the table in the relegation group. So it should be a tie that we can get through. So hopefully it's a nice path through to the final of the Conference League for us. But I think that will do it for today's episode. Just do enough in the Conference League and also pick up a quite big win in between those games against Hofer Berlin. In the Bundesliga, still in a fight though, 
try and get our way into that top seven in the Bundesliga. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and get stuck in to the semi-finals. We'll play that DFB Pockle 1 against Cologne. The other semi in that competition is between, of course, Bayern Munich and Wolfsburg. So again, on the better side of the draw, hopefully can make our way through to a first domestic cup final and off the back of that, and a clash with Borussia Dortmund, who I think are quite close to picking up the Bundesliga title. We will come back and play the first league of that conference league semi-final, which is against Grasshopper Zurich. Yet again, the first league is away from home. Hopefully this time we don't bowl it late and can actually pick up a win, but we'll come back tomorrow and get stuck in to those semi-finals. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Thought I could do this, left to the side.